expectations with absolute confidence. Consistently top-rated courses, a testament to our unwavering commitment to providing an exceptional learning experience, proven by our countless satisfied students. Yet, our commitment extends beyond the fundamentals. Academy of Emergency Sciences goes the extra mile, offering supplementary courses, including the complementary advanced airway course, enriching our students' knowledge. Join us in our mission to create a safer world through knowledge, expertise, and an unwavering dedication to life-saving. Academy of Emergency Sciences. Resuscitation is our calling, education our passion. In a world where knowledge is power, the Academy of Emergency Sciences celebrates a decade of excellence. For 10 remarkable years, we have been a beacon of unmatched medical training, founded with a steadfast commitment to delivering unparalleled education. The Academy of Emergency Sciences has consistently set the standard. Our distinguished faculty, comprised of specialist doctors, brings their extensive real-world experience to the forefront ensuring that our students receive the highest caliber of education. From American Heart Association, AHA, Basic Life Support, BLS, to Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support, ACLS, and Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS, courses. Our mission is to empower our students to lead resuscitations with absolute confidence. Consistently top-rated courses, a testament to our unwavering commitment to providing an exceptional learning experience, proven by our countless satisfied students. Yet, our commitment extends beyond the fundamentals. Academy of Emergency Sciences goes the extra mile, offering supplementary courses, including the complementary advanced airway course, enriching our students' knowledge, Join us in our mission to create a safer world through knowledge, expertise, and an unwavering dedication to life-saving. Academy of Emergency Sciences. Resuscitation is our calling, education our passion. In a world where knowledge is power, the Academy of Emergency Sciences celebrates a decade of excellence. For 10 remarkable years, we have been a beacon of unmatched medical training, founded with a steadfast commitment to delivering unparalleled education. The Academy of Emergency Sciences has consistently set the standard. Our distinguished faculty, comprised of specialist doctors, brings their extensive real-world experience to the forefront 
ensuring that our students receive the highest caliber of education. From American Heart Association, AHA, Basic Life Support, BLS, to Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support, ACLS, and Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS, courses. Our mission is to empower our students to lead resuscitations with absolute confidence. Consistently top-rated courses, a testament to our unwavering commitment to providing an exceptional learning experience, proven by our countless satisfied students. Yet, our commitment extends beyond the fundamentals. Academy of Emergency Sciences goes the extra mile, offering supplementary courses, including the complementary advanced airway course, enriching our students' knowledge. Join us in our mission to create a safer world through knowledge, expertise, and an unwavering dedication to life-saving. Academy of Emergency Sciences. Resuscitation is our calling, education our passion. In a world where knowledge is power, the Academy of Emergency Sciences celebrates a decade of excellence. For 10 remarkable years, we have been a beacon of unmatched medical training, founded with a steadfast commitment to delivering unparalleled education. The Academy of Emergency Sciences has consistently set the standard. Our distinguished faculty, comprised of specialist doctors, brings their extensive real-world experience to the forefront ensuring that our students receive the highest caliber of education. From American Heart Association, AHA, Basic Life Support, BLS, to Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support, ACLS, and Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS, courses. Our mission is to empower our students to lead resuscitations with absolute confidence. Consistently top-rated courses, a testament to our unwavering commitment to providing an exceptional learning experience, proven by our countless satisfied students. Yet, our commitment extends beyond the fundamentals. Academy of Emergency Sciences goes the extra mile, offering supplementary courses, including the complementary advanced airway course, enriching our students' knowledge, Join us in our mission to create a safer world through knowledge, expertise, and an unwavering dedication to life-saving. Academy of Emergency Sciences. Resuscitation is our calling, education our passion. In a world where knowledge is power, the Academy of Emergency Sciences celebrates a decade of excellence. 
For 10 remarkable years, we have been a beacon of unmatched medical training, founded with a steadfast commitment to delivering unparalleled education. The Academy of Emergency Sciences has consistently set the standard. Our distinguished faculty, comprised of specialist doctors, brings their extensive real-world experience to the forefront, ensuring that our students receive the highest caliber of education. From American Heart Association, AHA, Basic Life Support, BLS, to Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support, ACLS, and Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS, courses. Our mission is to empower our students to lead resuscitations with absolute confidence. Consistently top-rated courses, a testament to our unwavering commitment to providing an exceptional learning experience, proven by our countless satisfied students. Yet, our commitment extends beyond the fundamentals. Academy of Emergency Sciences goes the extra mile, offering supplementary courses including the complimentary advanced airway course, enriching our students' knowledge. Join us in our mission to create a safer world through knowledge, expertise, and an unwavering dedication to life-saving. Academy of Emergency Sciences. Resuscitation is our calling, education our passion. In a world where knowledge is power, the Academy of Emergency Sciences celebrates a decade of excellence. For 10 remarkable years, we have been a beacon of unmatched medical training, founded with a steadfast commitment to delivering unparalleled education. The Academy of Emergency Sciences has consistently set the standard. Our distinguished faculty, comprised of specialist doctors, brings their extensive real-world experience to the forefront ensuring that our students receive the highest caliber of education. From American Heart Association, AHA, Basic Life Support, BLS, to Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support, ACLS, and Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS, courses. Our mission is to empower our students to lead resuscitations with absolute confidence. Consistently top-rated courses, a testament to our unwavering commitment to providing an exceptional learning experience, proven by our countless satisfied students. Yet, our commitment extends beyond the fundamentals. Academy of Emergency Sciences goes the extra mile, offering supplementary courses, including the complimentary advanced airway course, enriching our students' knowledge, Join us in our mission to create a safer world through knowledge, expertise, and an unwavering dedication to life-saving. Academy of Emergency Sciences. Resuscitation is our calling, education our passion.
In a world where knowledge is power, the Academy of Emergency Sciences celebrates a decade of excellence. For 10 remarkable years, we have been a beacon of unmatched medical training, founded with a steadfast commitment to delivering unparalleled education. The Academy of Emergency Sciences has consistently set the standard. Our distinguished faculty, comprised of specialist doctors, brings their extensive real-world experience to the forefront, ensuring that our students receive the highest caliber of education. From American Heart Association, AHA, Basic Life Support, BLS, to Advanced Cardiovascular Life Support, ACLS, and Pediatric Advanced Life Support, PALS, courses. Our mission is to empower our students to lead resuscitations with absolute confidence. Consistently top-rated courses, a testament to our unwavering commitment to providing an exceptional learning experience, proven by our countless satisfied students. Yet, our commitment extends beyond the fundamentals. Academy of Emergency Sciences goes the extra mile offering supplementary courses, including the complementary advanced airway course, enriching our students' knowledge. Join us in our mission to create a safer world through knowledge, expertise, and an unwavering dedication to life-saving. Good morning and welcome to the Resuscitation Essentials for Moonlighters, or REM webinar. We want everyone to have the best learning experience possible, so please observe the following guidelines during the lecture. First, please keep your microphones on mute. Second, you are invited to type in your questions in the chat box at any time or ask them live at the end of the lecture. Lastly, the attendance link will only be posted in the chat box at the end of the webinar. A pleasant morning once again and enjoy today's lecture. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues, and young doctors. Greetings and welcome to our distinguished webinar series, REM, Resuscitation Essentials for Moonlighters a tribute to the Decade of Excellence at the Academy of Emergency Sciences. As an accredited American Heart Association training partner for BLS, ACLS, and PALS, we have consistently upheld the belief that resuscitation is not merely a task, it is our unwavering calling. Our motto, Resuscitation is our calling, Education our passion, underscores our enduring commitment to the art of life-saving. The choice of the acronym REM for this webinar is not by chance. It reflects a profound connection with scientific research, suggesting that REM sleep is when we most effectively consolidate learning and memory. Today, we gather to deepen your knowledge and enhance your resuscitation skills with the firm belief that the wisdom imparted here will translate into lives saved. This year-long webinar series is generously offered free of charge, our humble contribution to advancing the realm of resuscitation education. We are resolute in our mission to empower young doctors and healthcare professionals with the essential knowledge required for their arduous moonlighting shifts. We express our profound gratitude for your presence here today, and we invite you to embark on this journey of enlightenment with us. Together, let us strive for excellence and remember, resuscitation is our calling, education our passion. 
It is with great anticipation that we look forward to collectively advancing our understanding and proficiency in resuscitation. We are very fortunate to have a very accomplished speaker as our lecturer today. He took BS Biology at the University of Santo Tomas and pursued his Doctor of Medicine at the University of Santo Tomas Faculty of Medicine and Surgery. He did his specialty training in emergency medicine and served as the Chief Resident for the Makati Medical Center Department of Emergency Medicine. Currently, he is an active consultant of the Makati Medical Center Emergency Department and the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center. He also heads and chairs various committees and departments. He is the head on the Subcommittee on Audit of Death Certificates, Closed Medical Records Review Committee under the Office of the Medical Director at the Makati Medical Center. He is also the Chair of the Closed Medical Records Review Committee under the Office of the Medical Director at the Makati Medical Center. He is the Head of the Operations and Process Improvement Committee of the Emergency Department of the Makati Medical Center. He also serves as a Flight Doctor and Medical Advisor for EMA Global Philippines and is currently the Head of the Medical Records Management Department of the Makati Medical Center. He also teaches as a BLS and ACLS instructor under the Academy of Emergency Sciences. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, it is with great pleasure that I introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Mark Paul Castillo. Thank you, Dr. Palad, for the generous introduction. So just some corrections. Um, I'm just a consultant at Makati Medical Center. Um, but let me share my slides. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Resuscitation Essentials for Moonlighters. So today I'm tasked to... Okay. Today I'm tasked to discuss end of life, terminating resuscitation, and medical certification of cause of death. So this will be the outline of um, my lecture for today. Um, we all understand that death is both an event and a process. Um, when a person dies, it is an event in his life cycle. And it uh, the process of dying or the, the death itself is a process for the relatives, for the loved ones left. Um, just like in any other processes, there are many intricacies that surround a person's death. So in resuscitation, we always ask, when is it time to call the code? So this is a study in 2016 discussing the duration of cardiac arrest resuscitation and deciding when to call the code. So before we, uh, we tackle this study, we might want to look back at the other um, studies prior to this editorial. So in 2007, a study pub uh, by Morrison was published. They derived uh, a decision tool whether or not to stop or to terminate resuscitation. Based on their studies, all of these um, characteristics should be um, fulfilled. Like first, there should be no ROSC or return of spontaneous circulation prior to transport. There is no shock delivered. It is an unwitnessed arrest and there should be no bystander CPR performed. When all these criteria are satisfied, then based on this rule, we can terminate um, efforts of resuscitation. But just like in any other tool, we need to check if this is valid. So is the decision tool valid? Um, there are many studies um, regarding the validity of the BLS and ALS um, termination of resuscitation. So that in a validity study, you need to make sure that the um, decision rule or the decision tool has 
provides a positive predictive value or a specificity of more than or equal to 99%. So in this meta-analysis, it's a total of 19 studies included. The pooled specificity for BLS um, termination of resuscitation rule is 95%. And for ALS, it's 98%, almost all uh, 99%. Okay, so in a recent study in 2017, the uh, they analyzed um, they they applied the rule between men and women in uh, the European countries. So the performance measure was, um, the the performance measure was the ALS um, termination of resuscitation in relation to 30 day survival. The, the again the positive predictive value and the specificity in both men, men and women in this um study is greater than or equal to 99%. But what does science tell us? So this study published in 2013 tells us that um the the ideal or during the first 15 minutes of resuscitation almost 75% of patients who will eventually have a good neurologic outcome would have return of spontaneous circulation. Also in this study, during the first 15 minutes, the survival or the, the in this study, they measured the uh, modified Rankin scale. So they classified it from zero to five. If it's zero to three, then it's favorable, four and five those are non-favorable um, outcomes. So in this study, they, they saw that after 15 minutes or af uh, after 15 minutes of resuscitation, the chances or the probability that the patient will go out of the hospital without, the, without severe disability is less than 2%. So this graph shows that um, statement. So, also from this study, you would notice that the CPR duration for, for patients having MRS of 0 to 3 is about 16.1 minutes. So, it is consistent with other studies or with, with the findings of this study that the first 15 minutes is the most crucial for the patient. After that, we expect less uh, or poor, poorer prognosis. So this is the basis of the, the first study that I mentioned earlier. It is a study by Nagao in Japan, run from 2005 to 2012. They enrolled about 280,000 patients and they group them according to four groups, whether it's there's a shock given, there's a bystander CPR uh, noted, there's no shock, or there's no bystander CPR noted. So in this study, the favorable outcome, as you will notice, the shock with bystander CPR has a greater favorable outcome as compared to the no shock group which is just 0.9 to 1.1. However, based also from this study, they wanted to know what is the duration or what is the ideal duration for these groups. They found out that the for the shockable with bystander group, the ideal is 40 minutes. For shockable without bystander, it's also 40 minutes. Without bystander and non-shockable is around 44 minutes and non-shockable with bystander is around 45 minutes. So again, let's go back to our question. Um, when, when do we call the code? So as mentioned earlier, there are a lot of factors that could affect the code. You may use all these um, tools or all these decision tools for you to have a better um, prognosis or a be better outlook on when to call a code. Currently, 
the 2020 AHA guidelines did not recommend, did not explicitly recommend any cutoff because there um it has to have a lot of studies for us to determine um the ideal time. But these the studies that I've shown you earlier may be useful in deciding when to call a code. Of course, it will always be a case-to-case -case basis and it will um, depend on the treatment goal or the goals of the patient and the relatives. So after calling a code or after pronouncing the patient dead, you need to <clears throat> you need to write the death certificate. So this is uh, based on the Medical Certification of Cause of Death Handbook for Filipino Physicians, second edition. So the objective is to present the importance of a death certificate to discuss the proper way of certifying cause of death and to give an overview of the audit done on death certificates. So as uh, we all know that certificate of death is a permanent legal record which contains individual's death information or circumstances that surround it. It is used for settlement of claims, inheritance, insurance benefit, and uh, requirement for burial arrangements. As physicians, we play a critical role in the cause of death certification. It is our responsibility uh, to write the clinical diagno diagnosis of the cause of death. This is one of the last services or last professional service that we can render our patients. Um, the information on the death certificate are coded and classified according to the ICD, consolidated by the Philippine Statistics Authority, and will become foundation of the country's health policies, plans, and program. Thus, it is utmost important that the country's mortality data should be of good quality. After all, the road to good quality data starts with the clinical diagnosis of the physician as to the cause of death. These are legal mandates um, regarding cause of death. We have the civil registry law, which mandates us to register all facts concerning our, the civil status of the patient from birth to death. We have the Philippine Statistical Act, the local government code, the, and the Code of Sanitation of the Philippines. So registrable acts or vital events are death or fetal death. Um, fetal death is defined as pri uh, death prior to complete expulsion or extraction from the mother of the product of conception, irrespective of the duration of pregnancy. So this is a uh, graph or a table that shows you if you have a patient less than seven months old and the fetus lived for less than 24 hours, you will you should accomplish the certificate of live birth and certificate of death only in two copies. These are not registered but for statistical purposes. If the fetus live more than 24 hours, then we accomplish four copies of certificate of death. And then for patients more than seven months, we accomplish four certificates of fetal death. Um, most of um, one, one question that always arises is what do we do with a dismembered body part? We do not provide a death certificate for the dismembered body part. We instead we, we provide a certificate of dismembered body part. So this is a separate uh this is a separate lecture or this is a separate certificate aside from the certificate of death. Okay. Next is who accomplishes the or who is responsible for accomplishing the medical the death certificate. If the death occurred in the hospital, the physician who last attended the deceased or the administrator of the hospital or the medical director. For deaths in the hospital emergency department, then it is the emergency department officer who shall accomplish the certificate of death. Unless, letter A, there is a more qualified individual to accomplish the certificate of death, that is the attending physician, 
and letter B if it is a medical legal case. For death under medical legal case, it is the medical legal officer or the medical legal officer of the investigating agency. If the physician has reason to believe or suspect that the cause of death was due to violence or crime, then it is prob a probable co uh, case of medical legal, and then the then he is duty bound to immediately report to the authorities, either to the PNP or to the NBI. So these are some examples, but uh, of deaths that may have medical legal implications: stab wounds, gunshot wounds, suicide, strangulation, accidents resulting to death, physical assault, and other violence resulting to death and sudden death of an undetermined cause. If you have these kinds of patients, then it is safer for you to refer the, the case to a medical legal officer in your hospital or um, in the investigating agency, either PNP or NBI. If the death occurred in the ambulance, the physician during transport is responsible for the death certificate. And if it occurred outside the hospital, then it is the lo local health officer responsible for certifying the death. So this is a summary table of the who is responsible or the certifier for cause of death. For inpatients, it's the main attending physician. For, ED, for the emergency department, it is the emergency department officer unless the, the attending physician is more qualified or it is a medical legal case. For medical legal investigation, it is the medical legal officer of the hospital or the investigating agency. For ambulance, it's the physician during transport. And if it's outside the hospital, then it's the local health officer. We now go to the more tedious part, which is the medical certification. So this is the current municipal form for certificate of death. You should accomplish four copies, uh, validate, verify, and then sign all these four copies. So the first part is the demographics of the patient. You have the patient's name, the date of death, birth, age, etc., civil status, <laughs> place of death, and residence. Then the next part is the medical certificate. This is the part that you uh, that the physicians accomplish. It is filled out from top to bottom. So you start from the letter A, immediate cause of death, antecedent, and then underlying, and then other significant factors contributing to death. Don't forget to place the interval between onset and death. If um, the patient is between 15 to 49 years, years old, you need to accomplish 19C, which is the maternal conditions, whether the patient is pregnant, not pregnant, not in labor, in labor, etc. For deaths of external causes, like accidents, suicides, uh, or medical legal cases, you place the, uh, you also accomplish 19B for external causes of death. 20, uh, number 20 is whether an autopsy was done or not. And the number 22 is where you print and sign your name and you place the date when you signed the certification of cause of death. For children 0 to 7 years, 7 days old, you need to accomplish page 2 instead of page 1. That's numbers um, 14 to 8 to 18. Okay, so part one has three lines. You have the immediate cost, the antecedent cost, and the underlying cost. It, the entry shows chronology of events leading to death. There should only be one entry or cost per line, and the most recent event is on top, and the lowest line is considered the underlying cost. Underlying cost is the disease or injury which in initiated the train of morbid morbid events leading to death. It is the most important entry in the certification of cause of death. The lower, the low, the lowest most portion of completed in part one is always considered as the underlying cause. 
the immediate cause is the most recent condition that really directly leads to death and the antecedent cause are the um the things that happen in between so for example this is a case of a 56 year old man who dies from acute myocardial infarction within 3 hours of its onset he did not have any other illness according to the first a uh, few slides you accomplish from top to bottom. In this case, you only have one cause of death. You write it in the immediate cause, and it, was, it is also considered as the underlying cause. When there is only one entry, the condition in, entered in both the immediate and underlying cause is the underlying cause. Case number two, a 56-year-old man dies from abscess of the lung, which resulted from lobar pneumonia of the left seen on X-ray five year, five days ago. So here, the lung abscess is the immediate cause, and the, the lung abscess was brought about by a pneumonia seen five days ago. So the underlying cause here will be Pneumonia. You do not write, although you know that it is the underlying cause, you do not write it under underlying cause. Instead, you write it in the antecedent cause. Case number three, there are three causes of death. Uh, a driver dies from hypovolemic shock after sustaining multiple fractures when he was hit by a truck. So in this case, each line is filled out, one entry per line. So... <clears throat> The immediate cause is hypovolemic shock from um, from multiple fractures for, um, as a result of driver of a truck that fell off the ravine. Note that in this case, since the patient died of external cause, you need to also fill out 19B. Another case is a 10-year-old boy with past medical history of thalassemia for the past four years leading to uh the with who developed um severe anemia leading to high output cardiac failure 2 weeks ago then 3 days prior admission he developed cough and this dyspnea with respiratory rate of 44 the x-ray showed pneumonia so the immediate cause here is pneumonia 4 days antecedent cause is severe and uh high output cardiac failure due to severe anemia for 2 weeks and the underlying cause is thalassemia of four years. As noted, in the antecedent cause, you may write more than one entry or more than one cause, provided that you separate it using due to, secondary to, or semicolon. And then all other significant or contributory coexisting and pre-existing conditions are written on the on part two but always indicate also the interval. You may have multiple entries here separated by a semicolon. <clears throat> so examples um, with, with um, other significant um, findings. So a 56-year-old person dies from abscess of the lung, which resulted from, from lobar pneumonia on the left seen two weeks ago. He was known to have diabetes for 10 years. So you place the lung abscess in the immediate cause, the pneumonia on the antecedent cause, and you place diabetes mellitus on the contributing um, condition, uh, the conditions contributing to death. So you, you leave underlying cause blank. The the um health municipal of uh, the municipal health office will consider community acquired pneumonia as the underlying cause for this patient <clears throat> intervals between the cause of death should always be filled out um it, you can have estimates such as unknown approximately minutes hours days weeks months years or you could be very specific, like five days, three months, 10 years, one hour, etc. <clears throat> As a rule, the underlying cause occurred in uh, first in the sequence of events and would logically have the longest time interval. So these are just examples of um, cause, uh, certification of cause of death with uh, interval history.
Next, we go to ill-defined or um, ill-defined causes of death or ill-defined symptoms. These are vague categories or conditions that include signs and symptoms, abnormal clinical and laboratory laboratory findings. It should never be written as an underlying cause of death. Examples are asphyxia, asthenia, all those in that table. Um, you may write it anywhere in the in the three lines, but never as an underlying cause of death. So for example, if you have a patient who drowned, so you will place asphyxia as an immediate cause, and then there, there should be a cause for the asphyxia, then that's drowning. However, for mechanistic um, terminal events, it should never be reported in any one of the causes of death, such as cardiac arrest, or cardiopulmonary arrest, respiratory arrest, asystole, PFIB, VTAC, PEAs, cardiopulmonary. These mechanistic terminal events do not add value to the um, statistics and to the policy making of the government. We all know that all these mechanistic terminal events are signs or um, are signs of death. So we don't need to write it in the any parts of the medical certificate or the death certificate, I mean. General guidelines use the current certificate of death or certificate of fetal death. For deaths um, zero to seven days, accomplish 14 to 9A at the back of the uh, death certificate. For ages eight and above, you accomplish 19B to 22. For fetal death, you accomplish a certificate of fetal death. Do not use abbreviations or medical symbols. Never report ill-defined or signs and symptoms as an underlying cause. Never report mechanistic terminal events in any part of the uh, certificate of death. Do not record more than one cause of death per line. And the lowest line is the underlying cause. Do not skip lines. And then do not forget to indicate the interval in all lines, parts 1, A, B, C, and part 2. For specific groups, for example, uh, pregnant women, um, maternal deaths uh, refers to death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy. Uh, so here you, you this is a case of a 36-year-old who died of retained placenta. So as you will see, all lines or all causes of death are filled out and all intervals are um, filled out as well. For old age, this is the most challenging because most elderly die with the disease and not from the disease. So avoid entries such as senility, old age, senescence, or advanced age. If uncertain, you may write probable or presumed, or if we, you do not have any other comorbids, then you you, did, you place undetermined natural cause. In uh, the elderly, always consider also the possibility of abuse or neglect, suicide or in, inconspicuous injuries such as faults, and report them in immediately to the PNP. So these are some complications um, associated with the disease. So usually patients with CVD will die of, um, in, in the old age, will die of pneumonia. For the um, patients with the cubitus ulcer, they will die of sepsis, etc. For external events, uh, external events are external forces that usually uh, usually is a physical or chemical in nature that causes trauma or injury to the damage or damage to the tissues so if um uncertain you may write presumed or if very uncertain you de you deter uh, write undetermined intent so for example um so here you you need to fill out 19d as the ex um for death by external cause some examples, a patient who died after a gunshot, um, you place their perforating brain trauma secondary from a gunshot wound over the head because a handgun was discharged. 
It could be presumed accident. It could be presumed suicide. The place of occurrence is home or the street or the beach, etc. Next is a patient who died after attack by an assailant. So you can write undetermined. You could write presumed homicide. And the patient who died after a motor vehicular accident, you can write uh, accident in the highway, etc. But always remember that for patients who died of accident, you always refer first to the medical legal. It's up to you if you would want to fill out um, the, the certificate of death with external cause or you ask the uh, help of your medical legal officer. Because in the end, it is the certifier who will who will be called by court where, or, or who would be subpoenaed by court later on. <clears throat> A patient who died after fall, you can place there. Uh, so there's an intra-abdominal hemorrhage secondary to lacerations of the liver due to blunt force trauma of the abdomen because the patient fall from a tree by accident. So a patient who died after a lightning injury, then you can write ventricular fibrillation. Actually, you don't write that. Um, you write electrocution and then exposure to lightning. Next group is those patients with neoplasm. For patients with neoplasm, it's important to um, write the site of the neoplasm, the laterality if applicable, whether it's benign or malignant, and if the nature or histological type is known. If it's not known, then you just write unknown histology type. For infant deaths, um, you write it you filled this out on 19a to 19d for 19a it's the main disease or condition of the infant it's like the underlying cause of the adults and then letter c is the main mater maternal disease or condition affecting the infant it's also like the underlying cause in adults these two entries 19a and 19c are the most important parts of cause of death in an infant. So for example, this one, a 38-year-old uh, gave birth, 24 weeks uh, pregnant. Um, she had premature labor for six hours, subsequently delivered to a 700-gram infant, was treated at the ICU, and then died after 24 hours. The chest x-ray of the infant showed dense lung fields consistent with severe hyaline membrane disease. So the main uh, disease or condition is near, uh, respiratory distress syndrome because of a prematurity of uh, 24 weeks age of gestation. Okay, we go now to our last part, which is reviewing of audit of death certificates. Uh, the Department of Health um, mandates each hospital to review and audit the death certificates. If the death certificate, or if the death is less than 100, then we review 100 death certificates. If it's more than 100, we review 10% um, of that. Uh, I'm sorry, we, we review, um, we come up with 100 as well. So these are the parameters being audited when writing, um, when auditing a medical death certificate. Um, first, do we have multiple causes of death per line? Do we have missing intervals? Did we use abbreviation? Is the death certificate Ill illegible? Are there incorrect or clinically improbable chain of events leading to death? Is the first condition in the lowest line um, cannot be an underlying cause, such as mechanistic terminal events and um, ill-defined symptoms or diagnosis and are the details of death due, ex due to external cause missing that's 19d and the details of death due to neoplasm missing so this is just an overview of the how to write a death certificate you can always continue to learn uh, if you search on your google uh, doh academy they have two courses 
medical certification of cause of death for health facilities and medical certification of cause of death for licensed physicians. If you have free time, you can um, create an account or register an account and um, do stud, um, attend or enroll in these courses. Once again, good morning and thank you very much for listening. Okay, so uh, good morning to all again, once again. Of course, uh, Doc Mart, we want to thank you for, of course, taking the time to speak to our webinar for today. Your insight and knowledge were invaluable, of course, and your presence was greatly appreciated. And we are so thankful for your contribution. Both. So, okay, we will now proceed to the Q&A part of the webinar. So, guys, if you have some questions regarding the discussion, of uh, Doc Mart, you can freely uh, uh, state those questions in the chat box, of course. And we will try, uh, Doc Mart will try to answer those questions. So, guys, uh, questions? Okay, we have also some attendees in a uh, YouTube channel. So, guys, sa mga nanonood sa YouTube channel, of course, you can freely ask also uh, some questions regarding the topic that have been discussed. Thank you. So, I'll just wait, no? Meron po ba? Questions? Questions? Help, please. Okay. So, uh, let's just wait for them, Doc, no? Kasi naiyata sila. <laughs> Oh. Yata. oh, so okay. Questions, meron po ba, doctors? Okay. Thank you, Panay. Thank you, Doc. Oh, like that, thank you. Okay. So we have uh some questions din here. No, Doc. Eh, we will try to ano na lang. So Doc, uh, we have a question here. Do we have to fill up all the causes of that now? Which ones can we leave blank? Okay. So for the first question, uh as as noted, no, so we fill out from the top line to the bottom we can if there is only one cause of death then we can leave um the two lines the antecedent and the underlying blank but we never skip a line so as mentioned kanina in the lecture there are instances there that there is only one cause of death there are two causes of death or there are multiple causes of death uh, the important thing is we never leave the top uh, or the top the lowest line um blank sorry the top line blank so i hope that's uh clear when when we have um multiple causes that you think is uh maybe contributory but it has no direct effect you can always place that in the uh, uh, uh part two or other conditions underlying the cause of death or contributing to the cause of death most often we see kasi uh for example kasi yung the, the wording itself yung immediate antecedent and the underlying um nakakalito na siya to begin with no so when we see that um tendency is we fill out ah uh, ang underlying kasi nito is a uh, heart attack or acute coronary syndrome then i should place it on the underlying no so but the guideline suggests that you place it on the topmost Hopefully, na answer yung question nung anonymous. Okay, Doc Mart, thank you for that. Uh, we have a second question here, Doc. If okay, so I will just sure, read sure. it for you. So it says here, ang sabi niya, uh, in possible medical uh, medical legal cases, does putting in a cause of death have any implications in absolving someone of a crime? And can we refuse to accomplish the death certificate if we suspect fault late? That's the okay. question. Okay. So as noted in, um, we all know that death certificate is a legal document. 
So any anything that you write there, you can be asked in the future um in courts or if you if you are subpoenaed um can you refuse to accomplish yes you can refuse to accomplish a death certificate if we su you suspect uh foul play not not refuse per se but you you give the responsibility or you share the responsibility to first the medical legal officer of the hospital if there's none then there are uh, medical legal officers of the investigating agencies like PMP and uh, NBI. Most, uh, if there are a number of funeral homes or um, that that know or that has accredited medical legal um, officers, so you may refer them to them. Uh, you may refer the case to them and just place an, an undetermined natural cause in the in your. Uh, in the form that you are about to accomplish. And then you also provide medical abstract or something that um to 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 put basis on uh for that um uh, case. I think we have a question from Randy. Yes. yes. So I'll I'll just read it now. Uh doc yung COVID suspect or COVID negative san po siya isusulat. Or are they contributing to that po ba? Okay. Yes. If uh if you think that if the patient died of pneumonia, then COVID suspect, you may write it doon sa any of the three. Okay. If hindi naman siya contributing, like for example, a patient who has who died of heart failure, um, because he has already um coronary artery disease and then the patient had COVID during admission, you may write it in the uh, other contributing factors to death. Okay, I hope uh, that answers your question, Paul. No? Uh, we have here uh, Sir Randy Kabading. I think uh, he's raising his hand. Are you there, Paul, Sir Randy? Do you have any some questions? Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, intayin na lang natin siya, uh, Doc. No? Pero we have a question here po sa YouTube. So, sabi ng isang anonymous dito, uh, death on the ambulance conducted by a paramedic without a physician. Who will complete the death certificate po? Okay. So, in the Philippines, uh, we always um, have those cases. No? So, death in the ambulance and then brought to the emergency department. Sadly, hindi lahat na ambulance will have a doctor on board. No? So, the, 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 the declaration of death will happen in the emergency department. So, therefore, if it happened in the emergency department, it is the emergency department who will be responsible in writing the death certificate or in certifying the death. So, wala pa ta hindi, hindi naman kasi lahat ng ambulance natin are equipped with uh, or are um, transport will have a doctor on board. But for some cases na talagang hindi mo, like kunwari merong ER, uh, may mga ED patients na dinadala na talagang there are already signs of um, death like rigor and you are very unsure whether to, to uh, how, what to write in the certificate of death. You can always write undetermined cause and then uh, you can always write undetermined cause and then provide uh, uh, medical abstract and then the local health office will do the uh, death certificate. Pero syempre, ano yun? Yun yung mga nakasulat. Uh, yun yung mga nakasulat sa guidelines. Iba rin naman sa practice. Um, uh, I mean, marami rin sigurong ginagawa yung municipal health. Marami rin ginagawa yung mga nasa uh, hospital. Ako ba? Sorry, can you hear me? Okay, so um, it's a case-to-case -case basis. If you have good relationship with your municipal health officer, um, then all these things, all, all, all these processes will be smooth. 
Kasi ano yan eh, never ending turuan kung sino dapat. But the guidelines is clear. If it, uh, um, but I think the practice of those guidelines is not yet 100%. Okay, Doc. Uh, thank you for that answer. Po. Uh, we have also another from YouTube. Another question. Po. Uh, death on ambulance for transfer. Do they go back to hospital record or continue to hospital of transfer for death certificate? Okay. So, um, if, the pa if the patient died in the hospital, then that death certificate, the, the hospital will have a copy of the death certificate. If the patient did not die in the hospital, then all these will be part of the, um, all these copies. Yeah, sorry, it is the municipal health office who will have the copy of the death certificate. So, um, process I, uh, it is the relative who registers these deaths in the municipal health office. So, like, like in our hospital, for example, we have four copies. One copy goes to the patient's chart. Three copies goes to the relative. Okay, out of the three copies, one copy will go to the municipal uh municipal health. Two sorry, two copies will go to the municipal health office, and one copy will remain with the relative. So ah, uh, yung tanong na if namatay sa ambulance, saan pupunta yung copy ng death certificate? If the municipal health office accomplished the death certificate, then the copy remains with them. If the death certificate is certified in the hospital or is written in the hospital, then the hospital will have the copy of that death certificate. Okay, Doc. Thank you again for that, Doc. Another question po, Doc. Uh, is it okay to put undetermined cause of death in the death certificate? Yes, although it is not encouraged, to put undetermined cause um, in cases where we do not have we do not really know what is the cause of death and autopsy is uh, suggested we can always place undetermined natural cause i thank you doc mart uh, we have a question again uh, it says here uh, in your own practice what guide, uh, what guidelines do you follow to stop cpr yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, in my practice, um, one, um, there are many things I consider when stopping or terminating resuscitation, um, whether it is an out of hospital or in hospital arrest. I have more. Uh, I mean, I termine. I usually give um weight to those in hospital arrest. Um, compared to out, has, out of hospital arrest, I consider that as one of my um, decision tool or decision factor. The comorbidities of the patient, the age of the patient. So these things will come into play when deciding whether uh, to stop resuscitation or not. Um, for example, a patient was brought in the emergency department, buhay, tapos nagkaroon ng in-hospital death or ER death then uh, mas eager or mas mas matagal yung resuscitation na ginagawa compared sa um, there are already signs of libidity, rigor, yun halos wala ng uh, um, termin um, halos hindi mo na siya i-resuscitate kasi it will be futile. Another thing pala, no? so tayong mga Pilipino, we, we always have the we always want to show compassion. You know? So there is a term in the 2010 AHA guidelines, yung token resuscitation or parang slow resuscitation. In short, yung parang for show na resuscitation. These are not encouraged. Um, this is actually prohibited. Why? Kasi um, two things. You niloloko mo yung sarili mo na nagre-resuscitate ka ng for show at the same time, niloloko mo yung relatives. So, although it's hard to say it bluntly to relatives that uh, we should stop resuscitation or it is advisable that we end um, efforts of resuscitation. 
um, it takes um, some science and some art in diver- uh, in communicating that with the relatives. You never ask. Uh, mahirap yun eh when you ask um, page relatives na titigil na po ba natin? Kasi you place the you place the burden on them instead of you telling them we all uh, 30 minutes na po tayo nag-resuscitate um never nagkaroon ng return of spontaneous circulation puro po flatline then i think it will be best to stop resuscitation as compared to tigil na po ba natin yung pagbomba sa kanya so mas mas traumatic yun for the relatives rather than the um former statements Si Sir Randy may tanong na kamute yata. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you again. Okay, ah, uh, let's unmute pa uh, si Sir Randy. Sir Randy, Ayan. unclaimed bodies and undetermined cause of death. How do you dispose the bodies? Okay, so uh, I I have to be honest. I I'm not that familiar with the uh, the specifics of unclaimed bodies. But there is a certain period when you can store these in the um in the hospital. Kasi ayaw naman natin na um, punong-puno na unclean bodies. And there is a process for this. Uh, I'll read on it on the Code of Sanitation. Um, but I'm sorry, I cannot. I don't have the answer right now for this one. Uh, thank you again, Doc Mart. Uh, we have another question po uh, coming from the one of the participants on YouTube. Uh, in case a death certificate has been completed, completed, the relatives later on decided to have an autopsy. Will the death certificate already completed be changed based on the autopsy findings? There will be two death certificates for that case. No? So one that is filled out by you without an autopsy, autopsy and the other one to be filled out by the uh, pathologist who did the autopsy. Um, if the first death certificate is not yet registered, then there will be no problem. The relatives will have to decide to register the second death certificate. If the first uh, that certificate is already registered, then there should be an amendment filed in court for that to be removed from the records and the new death certificate should be uh, placed instead. Sika. Sika. Okay, po. thank you, Doc. Another question po coming from the participants here in Zoom. Uh, okay. For mass deaths, uh, examples, calamities, shipwrecks, are the medical legal officers responsible for that? Um, it is the local health office for calamities or mass casualties um, to determine or to, to write or certify the death for those kinds of uh, cases. Okay, okay, Doc Mart, thank you again. Uh, I hope that answers your question, uh, Dr. Chad Landig. Okay, I think, uh, do we have any questions? Meron pa May po ba? Meron pa sa chat uh, from Kyle Marquez. Oh, Kyle Marquez, uh, yeah. Uh, if a patient has multiple comorbids, should we put them all under significant conditions, uh, uh, other significant conditions? If you think that these comorbids probably contributed to death, you may place them in the um, other significant conditions. The problem in our system is, um, for example, I, I always see this, that doctors write all of the diagnosis or all of the comorbids in, of the patient to the death certificate. So that parang feeling ko ang motto, the more the manier or the more the more the more you write, the more accurate you you become. No? Or you you uh, the more you place in the death certificate, the more it is valid. No? So um, again, you can place this if you think this contributed to the comorbids of the patient. When insurance claims are you know, 
are reviewed, it is not only the death certificate that is being reviewed. It is also the other um, documents or other visits, hospital visits that um, that is, uh, it is also reviewed. So if you think hindi naman siya na, na contribute doon, you, you, can, you can always not write. You have the option not to write it in the significant conditions. Example, um, comorbids na cholecystectomy siya noong year 1990. You don't have, it's part of past medical history, but it's not part of the cause of death right now. Okay, Doc, thank you once again. And I hope that answers your question, uh, Mr. Ty Marquez. Okay. okay, do we have any questions again? Questions, questions? Okay, I think wala naman na po, Doc. No? And we have no questions din po sa YouTube channel natin. Okay, so with that, again, of course, Mokmar, thank you again for imparting your knowledge to us. And I hope may mga natutunan po tayo ngayon. No? And of course, before we leave, guys, uh, let's make sure na, na fill, nag-fill out na po tayo sa attendance link natin na pinasa ko sa meeting chat. No? So that uh, we, can, we, we will know, of course, kung nag kayo or hindi. Same with the attendees sa uh, YouTube channel natin. No? So uh, I, I guess that's it, Doc. Doc Mark. No? Thank you thank very you. much you so again much. to yes. the Academy of Emergency Sciences for the uh, invitation um, yes. and com congratulations and good luck to all our Moonlighters. Okay. Res residency in Makati Med is still open. <laughs> Promote. <laughs> yes. So, okay. I guess that's it, Doc. Thank you so much. And, thank you. Uh, yes. Thank you. Again, uh, dear participants, uh, just make sure that you already filled out to the attendance link that I've sent to the meeting chat. No? Same with the attendees in our YouTube channel. Again, thank you so much and have a great day. Last time I think I was going to go to the hospital. I'm 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 going to go to the ah <laughs> 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 Sana sa mga tanong, hindi ako na ang lupa. Hindi, most right na ang mga sabi ako. Hindi, 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 hind